Hey guys, I'm Sketch, and today's episode we're going to talk about prop making, uh, specifically using the technique of foam and warbler. Uh, foam, rigid foam you can buy at our, hard, our hardware store, and the mythical warbler of the new crafting material we have in this day and age. Um, basically, as you see with here, this Nirvana staff from Final Fantasy X was constructed using this technique. The inside here is foam carved into the shape and then wrapped uh, with warbla. So I will be able to show you generally step by step how this is done by recreating another staff. So I found an image of the Punisher staff uh, and blew it up and printed it out to have a template. Uh, putting it on rigid foam uh, insulation that you can get from Home Depot or Lowe's. Trace it out. Here you can see me using a bandsaw to cut out the shape. Uh, you can use a hand scroll saw or an exacto knife if you need to. I just like using my bandsaw, uh, mainly because it's faster and straighter. Uh, and here is it completely cut out. Uh, you can see I left in some marks that we'll go into later. So as you can see, we took the templates that I made off my computer. We already cut them out, like we show in the fi uh, the pictures. And so basically, what I'm doing is marking out where the different details are. So usually I make out an X where I want to cut straight through, uh, or mark on where I think is the ledge. Because actually on this staff, where they see where we have the uh, the lighter gray, is actually an indent. So we'll actually cut straight through here and then make a little ridge when we carve out there. So then when we wrap it, the warbler will push right into this corner. Now this one is a lot more complicated, so this is probably going to be a lot more fun to see me just whittle away as uh, we're getting So here's a time lapse of me carving. Uh, this is the Punisher staff. Uh, first thing I'm doing is cutting straight through where I marked before with those little X's. Um, as I'm carving, I'm just using a utility knife, a very thin one, and shaving away until I get the shape I want. Uh, I go back between that and a larger utility knife uh, or an X-Acto knife, depending on what I need. And every once in a while I'll go in with the Sharpie just to clarify where the details are and how I want to proceed with them. And so you see I'm going to sand out to make everything look smoother so when Warble goes around it, it's a smoother surface. Alright guys, so as you see we finished the sculpting. Uh, both sides. All the wonderful detail that will be in here. And so now we want to wrap it with Warble. Now, there's three different types of uh, warbler. There's the standard warbler, the black art warbler, and the clear warbler. Uh, warbler basically is a thermoplastic, a plastic mixed with another medium. Uh, apply heat, becomes pliable, cools down, becomes rigid again. Uh, the original warbler uses a coarse medium in it. This actually gives it a lot of strength, but when you're done with your project, you tend to have a kind of a, a really bumpy surface afterwards. Black art has a much uh, finer medium in it, which gives you a much smoother surface when you're done working and there's less work to do afterwards. So we're going to go with the black one. Uh, what you need for tools is obviously you're heating up a heat gun. You should have one of these anyway if you're a cosplayer. <laughs> Comes in handy for multiple reasons. Um, another thing is, you know, good pair of scissors. Come in handy. You can also use a utility knife. Um, but one of the things I find that's really nice is a, is a clay sculpting tool. Uh, I prefer the one that kind of has one end that's a little bit of a, a curve, kind of like a spatula, and another one that kind of has like a, a point or like a, a dull knife bit. And why is, because you'll see in the, in the footage to come, is that it gives you the ability to go in and make sure that when the, um, the warbler becomes softened and, you know, sinks in, you can actually get the details to go into the crevices of what you carved. Here's another time lapse. As you see, I'm taking a big sheet. Admittedly, I'm using too big of a sheet, but you do have to remember that you need uh, overlap length when you get to the other side. I'm heating it up. Uh, the warbler is relaxing into the shapes, and then I'm following with the sculpting tool to uh, make sure that the detail that I carved is uh, translating through. Uh, trimming up the edges and getting ready to flip for the other side. Uh, I did have a bit of an issue. Uh, I overheated in one area, ended up melting the, uh, the insulation foam, and had to uh, repair it. Uh, this is the great thing about Warbler, keep your scraps. Uh, heated up a ball of it, molded it uh, in my hand, and was able to 
fix the area that was wrong. So yeah, you have to be careful with your heat because if you melt the foam then you lose your detail and it just gets a little annoying, but it can be fixed. As we see, we're almost getting done with it. Trimming up and we will have a wrapped Punisher. All right, uh, so here you see we finished up wrapping. Uh, I've actually attached it to the, the dowel for the the rod part, added more detail with some more warbler, and so now what we're going to do is we're going to Mod Podge, or basically seal it. You can either use Mod Podge or a diluted uh, Elmer's glue, and basically the reason why you want to do that is because this is technically a plastic, and in a way is kind of a wax, so when you try to spray paint it, it bubbles away. It's a little weird, but if you seal it up with a, just a thin, quick layer of Mod Podge, uh, now it has a surface that you can adhere paint to. So uh, after we get that done, paint it up, and we'll show you the final product. And here we are. This is the uh, final product of the Punisher staff from Final Fantasy X. Um, basically, most of this is just regular spray paint. Uh, this is more uh, just hitting it with different colors to make this gradient. Um, and then uh, up here, did a base color of uh, white, and then went in with uh, acrylic paints, mixing different shades of the purple and the... Uh, the beige uh, detailed with the orange and then uh, resin casting uh, uh, for the gems and uh, there you go now it can go with the collection so uh, if you maybe want to go to our forums uh, post any uh, prop photos you have of doing something similar of technique uh, or if not you want to comment uh, on this episode uh, also subscribe to us on iTunes and YouTube, uh, like us on our Facebook pages and Google+, Plus. Uh, leave us a voicemail, <laughs> that wonderful, wonderful voicemail, and uh, we'll see you next time.